So we're going to get into 2.9 now. Uh, I actually already filmed this, so let me just clear that. Okay, uh, we'll get to that shortly. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to use some math, and we're going to be using the math methods. We've done string methods already, and we're going to do math methods for 2.9. Now, why are we skipping 2.8? 2.8 just covers integer and double objects. I don't want to go over that. It's a waste of my time. It's the same thing with strings, just with integer and, and double. So Let's write an integer. Yay, you guys should know how to do this. Integer a equals negative 5. Yes, we can save them. Now let's print the absolute value of this. So we're just going to do math, which is our, our class, our math methods. Then we're going to do the dot operator since all the math methods are static. Um, and then we're going to do what method we want to use. I could have a ton of them right here. And we're just going to do abs for absolute value. Since it's a method, we're going to put a pair of parentheses. And then we'll do a because that's the number we want to find. So we're going to find the absolute value of a, the absolute value of negative 5. And all absolute value is just the positive version, basically, of a number. So if it's absolute value negative 5, it's going to print out 4. We can also reassign the value of a to a equals uh, math dot abs absolute value of a. Um, we can reassign it. So when we print out just a, it'll print out the absolute value of itself. So it's going to print out, uh, print out two lines. Of five is what it's going to do now, uh, because we reassigned it. It's no longer going to print out negative five. Awesome, cool. Uh, what about a double? Let's do double b equals negative two point zero. Um, let's print out the absolute value of a double. Uh, since absolute value is an integer method, what will it do? Well, I will show you. So if we find the absolute value of negative two uh, point zero, it is still going to return two point zero positive because it is. Uh, double very very cool um, now let's do another one let's uh, do system dot out dot print line uh, let's print out the power let's do print out b to the uh, fifth power or fourth power let's do b to the fourth power or let's do a to the fourth power how about that so let's do uh, math dot power no p o w for pow it's gonna be a little bit shorter kind of like absolute values a little bit shorter we only have three letters so pow and then we want to do a to the fourth power. So it's just going to be a comma four. So when we run this, of course, we're going to see our five, five, two. And then our fourth line should have a to the fourth power. So five to the fourth power is 625. What if we did a to the negative fourth power? Now, if we did this on paper, it would still be 625. So is this still going to be 625? When we do Java? No, it's going to give us a decimal. Ha 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 ha. Uh, so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's going to find, I believe, the fourth root of this. So, if I um, get out my calculator uh, and figure that out, um, I can tell you. Yeah, we're going to get a uh, an answer that is not cool. So yeah, that's uh, we're not going to do that. No, 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 not happening. Um, what if we want to find uh, square root? So let's reassign b, and we'll just do the square root. Actually, we can't do that. We have to do math dot sqrt for square root of b. So negative two times negative two. What's going to happen when we print this out? So let's print out uh, b again. Uh, so we're going to get our five five two point zero six hundred twenty five again. And then we're going to get our square root of b. What's it going to print out? Yeah, so you cannot find the square root of a negative number, so we're going to get an error. If we did the square root of math dot uh, absolute value of b, and then we reprinted out b, that's not why we wanted to put b, then it'll give us a square root. So, the square, so yeah. Uh, the square root of 2 is that number, 1.4142135623730951. That's not like a robot. So, yeah, square root, very, very cool. Um, let's do a, a random integer. So let's say we want to create a random number. I'll remove all this. We don't need it. So let's do integer random equals new. Actually, we don't have to do that. Um, let's do math.random. Uh, since it is a method, we do have to put the parentheses, and we'll do times, let's do a number between 1 and 10, so we're going to do times 10, uh, and we'll do plus 1, and we want to get a number between 1 and 10, so let's just, I'll just show you what this does, uh, I have to put it in between my parentheses, uh, because of PEMDAS, now, what happens when I do this, exactly, 
it's going to get us an error because math.random is a double math method. So it's going to give us a double value. So we have to cast it, and now it'll give us the integer version of it. So it's always going to round down. And yeah, uh, no error. We didn't print it out. Um, what if I just want to do a random number? Well, a random number is always going to be between 0 and positive 1. So if I print out random, it's going to give us 0 because 1, it's an integer. So if I print out random, sooner or later it'll print out 0. What if I print out the double version of this? So if I do double random, I know, spooky. Uh, well, we're going to get an error because it's casting as an integer. Uh, so let me stop this real quick. Uh, and then I'll restart it. So double random equals math.random. It's going to give us a number less than 1, but greater than 0. Really long number here. Uh, so if I wanted to do it between, let's say, 11 and 20, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this. So 11 and 20. So what we're going to do is we're going to subtract 20 plus 11, 20 by 11, and we're going to get 9. Then we're going to add 1 to that, so we're going to get 10. So we're going to multiply math.random times 10. And, of course, put that in our parentheses. Then what we're going to do is that we're going to add the smallest number, the minimum number, so 11. So our minimum number is 11. 20 minus 11 is 9. Plus 1, that's 10. So now we are going to get a number between 1, sorry, between 11 and 20. And we got 18. Let's run this again. We're probably, let's say 15. Maybe we're going to get 15. Maybe, maybe, maybe. 19. Yeah, close enough. So it's uh, less than 20, but greater than 11. So, yeah, and we could get 20 if we made this as an integer. It would round down. So we could get like 20.2 um, if we had this as a double. So if we wanted to be less than 20, we would have to do this to times 10, uh, I believe, as plus 10. Uh, but that's actually going to lower it to a number between 10 and 20. So, uh, yeah. Very, very cool. And I highly recommend you screw around with this. Let's do another one. Let's do a number between, um, let's do 16 and 44. So 44 minus 16 is 30, no, 16, I'm doing like really bad mental math. No, 28 is what it is. So we're going to add one to that, and we're going to get 29. So we're going to multiply math.random by 29. And then we add it by our minimum, which is 16. So now that we've done this, we're now going to get a number between 16 and 44. 33? Oh, I was close! Okay, uh, 33.8. This would actually, if this was an integer, it would round down to 38. So that's very, very cool. Um, let's do one more, because this is actually our last one, by the way. Uh, let's do a number between 155 and 231. What are we going to do? So we're going to do 231 minus 155. That is equal to 31 plus 45. So 76. Yes. Um, so 76. We're going to multiply it by 76. Our minimum is 155. So we're going to add 155 to it. And this is probably not 76. I'm just really stupid. Um, so, yeah, 222, um, that's between 155, 231, we'll do it two more times, uh, 188, 190, okay, close, uh, 201, 193, okay, so yeah, that is how you do math.random, this one is probably the hardest one out of all, and they're not really hard at all, uh, to be honest with you, and yeah, that is the end of, uh, 2.9, that's the end of unit 2, Actually, so go check out Unit 3 if it's up. Go check out Unit 1 if you haven't learned that. I don't know why you haven't. Uh, there's more Unit 2 videos, more AP Computer Science videos. Go check this out. Please like, subscribe. It's free. It really does help me out. I'll see you guys in the next video. Adios.